we always said this was going to be a critical point. Are we going Ireland or Wales? Where, where do you want to point me? We're going to... chatting to Big Chief Matt. Basically he's saying that if we make Lundy, it's a game changer. It's huge. Lundy being the small island in the Bristol Channel. I'm gonna hand over to Matt now. Matt, why are you so optimistic about Lundy? What is, what is it about Lundy that makes you smile at five o'clock in the morning? <laughs> well, it's, a it's a beautiful place anyway, so you know, it's a little, uh, a little diamond in the, um, out there in the rough. But yeah, I mean, the thing is that, that you know, we set this up by starting to angle you out away from the coast yesterday um, with this tide that rushes up through here. But when we get to this area here, the tide whooshes up the Bristol Channel. So we're really going to try and work the slack that we've got at the beginning of this tide and get you a little bit west first thing. And then hopefully you'll be able to use that tide and come up with it. And if we can get that, you know, if we can make that target on this swim, that sets up a whole like different scenario for crossing the Bristol Channel, possibly only a couple of days instead of three or four days of hard hard graft. So um, let's um, see how you get on. Matt said this best yesterday. He described the Bristol Channel as a maze. And it's just because with all of the, the tides and currents going this way and you want to go that way, swimming is on a knife edge. If you get the slightest degree wrong, you are disappearing off to Ireland or you are crashing um, into the Bristol Channel. It's Straight just- Straight down to Land's basically. <laughs> Actually going back to land's end. Oh no. Okay, time to get suited, time to go to work, time to put my game face on. Crystal Channel, the Rhino Neck is coming. swim here on Lundy Island just off the coast of Devon we're in a place right now called Jenny's Cove this place is stunning I, I honestly can't do it justice worth noting is this entire island actually comes under marine conservation so what that means is you're not allowed to fish here and if you can't fish here the sea life thrives as a result the birds have somewhere to come and eat um, seals ah oh, that was one of my favorite parts just coming face to face with a seal They're, they're so like the smaller ones. They, it sounds odd, but they've got such a personality. We were playing hide and seek, and when he was on the surface, I was like, hey buddy. And then when he ducked under, I ducked under, and I was like, I see you. And he was like, ah, you got me. It's such a privilege. But at the same time, Lundy Island shows what happens when we let wildlife thrive, like it was always intended to. And, and right now, because the, the sea is so like vibrant, so full of fish, the, the birds just have somewhere to come and eat. And, and while you don't get puffins on the mainland, I must be able to see hundreds here. In summary, while on the Great British Swim, we, we focus a lot on the mental aspects and the physical aspects of the whole adventure. I think Lundy is just a brilliant example of, of what can happen if we let wildlife just thrive and, and kind of exist how it was always intended to. Um, been a while since we've done one of these sort of Q and A's. There are some common questions that are coming up on social media that I wanted to take the time to really answer. Firstly, uh, regarding my salt tongue. Um, I appreciate a lot of people's concern. Um, it, is, it really, it really does mean a lot. It's kind of okay. Um, it's kind of under control. A lot of people saying like, why don't I use a snorkel? People were even sending me different models of snorkel that I might be able to use, like full masks, ones that you just put in your mouth, like one that goes over your nose. There's a part of me that just, I wouldn't sleep well at night if I knew I used a snorkel. Does that make sense? I just, I just, I can't, I can't use a snorkel. If you say you're gonna swim it, you swim it. You know, that means no flippers, <coughs> no snorkel. <coughs> this is the Great British Swim. It's not the Great British Snorkel. Next, a lot of people asking, will we do this in 100 days? If you'd have asked me this at the start in Margate, I would have said, yes, absolutely, 100 days. But that was all in theory. That was all with my calculations on a pen and paper. 
since swimming around the entire south coast i've learned a lot i've become a little bit more philosophical about the whole great british swim and now if you ask me can we do it in 100 days my reply would be it's not up to me which which sounds a little bit strange but but really it isn't up to me it's up to the ocean our best day in 24 hours we were able to swim 30 miles that was a huge day if you do 30 miles a day and you average that out that means you get done in about 60 to 70 days but again that's all theory equally around uh, lime regis bay in a 24-hour period I only managed to swim five miles. Reason being, I was eating currants. Uh, the, the wind was just not in my favor. Uh, I was getting stung by jellyfish from every angle. And because of that, I only managed five miles in 24 hours. So if you average that out, that actually equates to 400 days, which means I'm spending my Christmas still swimming. I want an easy Christmas. Relaxing with my feet up. This Great British Swim started as a personal endeavour and I, I think the very fact that everybody now wants to see it finish, it's, it's, been, it's been so nice that it's evolved into something you know, far bigger than myself. We always said this was going to be a critical point. Are we going Ireland or Wales? Where, where do you want to point me? We're going to Ireland and Wales. <laughs> <laughs> What we want to try and avoid is getting drawn into these kind of like big bays. My thoughts are that we'll actually angle across towards the Irish side because you get a fairly consistent flow all the way up there. So the, these bays are going to make the Battle of Lime Bay the yeah. Tames. This bit here, we're looking at least a week at sea, I would have thought. Yeah, so the... Wales, bang, Dublin, eat. Dublin, yeah. Yeah. smack. So guys, called a halt to the proceedings yesterday um, just because my shoulders are making noises that they probably shouldn't be making. I wanted to just do this vlog because it's quite easy to see, you know, rhino neck and, and salt tongue, uh, but the reality is, is whatever is going on inside of my shoulders is, uh, is not good. Uh, I'm no physio, but it shouldn't be making this noise. Um, also as well, I've just done some maths. I think we've probably taken, you know, 500,000 strokes. So that means, you know, we've got two million more to take. So that's why it's, it's all about boxing clever right now. Um, we've got the Bristol Channel to attack and get across. And I think it's, it's, it's about balancing this kind of like mental fortitude and, and, you know, gritting your teeth and getting through it, but also doing it intelligently because ultimately, you know, there's no point celebrating when you get across the Wales, when you've got Ireland, Scotland, and then all the way back down England to do as well. So, um, gonna do some prehab on my shoulder before I attempt to swim today. But yeah. I'm still so far to go. Right guys, that's it for this week's vlog. Remember to like and subscribe to Red Bull's YouTube channel. And remember you can track all my progress as I make my way all the way around the coast of Great Britain at redbull.co.uk slash Great British Swim.